What's up guys, this is Oli and it's the one year anniversary since the global launch of Rivengard. Woo! That means that we are going to play a special anniversary event. It's Nimrul's Adventure, one of the best heroes in the game that many of us actually <laughs> did not buy when we first opened the app because we weren't quite convinced that the game is going to be as fun as it turns out to be. And now we finally get our chance to unlock that hero in case you haven't unlocked him yet. Regarding that, originally there wouldn't have been enough shards dropped in the adventure to unlock the hero. However, we the players brought this up to Snowprint and they reacted promptly and added a couple of extra shards in the adventure. So if you are buying the adventure bundle, you are going to receive at the end of the adventure important at the end of the adventure for every star you unlocked in the adventure extra shards and extra laurels and that means that you're going to get your hands on Nimrul finally you're going to have an epic badge which means you can promote him from rare which is the rarity that you're going to unlock him in to epic and you're also going to receive a couple of laurels which might be enough to promote him once more and make him that little bit more stronger if you happen to find another epic badge there's one more thing we have to get out of the way before we delve into this adventure it was designed by Kyle and Kyle Kyle has now been hired as a full-time employee by Snowprint. Kudos to you, Kyle. You absolutely deserve it. You're absolutely crushing it on the official Discord. Thank you so much for all the work you've put into this adventure, couple of the last adventures, and all you're doing for us players on the Discord. Without any further ado, let's look at the first encounter. This is common encounter number one. It's time to unlock some stars. So, we need to get a lightning victory, play with a Caven Realm team and then not take any damage, which is not that hard when you're allowed to create summons. You know the drill, we've seen this a couple of times. So we're going to play Runner Clue, who's gonna give us a couple of shades and then Umanu helps us spread the love, or in this case, the darkness. So first, create some darkness, that's Nimrul's shop. Now move in with Umanu, spread the darkness, and now step number three to a winning game combination is actually use the active of Umanu and then after that go for the effect of Runner Clue to give us a couple of shades and that's the first encounter already. Lightning victory, no questions asked, pretty straightforward. So on to the next one. Which takes us to common encounter number two with the very same victory conditions as common encounter number one. So there's not really a reason to switch around in the team unless you're feeling like playing Queen Akeshu, which is not a bad choice, generally speaking, because in this encounter, I don't think that there's that many options to get the most out of Umanu. We're going in with Nimrul. That takes care of the guys to the top left on the map. We have a little bit of darkness. That's what we call a good start. <laughs> then we continue with Queen Akeshru and we're just creating a shade. We don't want to go for the active here. We just want a shade because we're gonna give our opponent something to shoot at, which means that they're not going to shoot at us, which is what we want. All right, so now we can move in with Nimrul and now it's time for the active of Queen Akeshru to try and take out both of these guys. Didn't quite work, but there's only one guy on the map and we have a couple of shades. We also have Nimrul who happens to be a heavy hitter and that means a lightning victory. So pretty straightforward level. Kind of lucky that we could still get the lightning victory with one more turn to go. That takes us to common encounter number three, where again, the same victory conditions are in place. This is like the warm up section of this entire adventure. Uh, we're not starting like furiously or anything like that. We can already look at the lineup of the opponents and we can immediately see where Wait a second, that looks like a straight line, which in turn means that we can use Queen Akeshru. So I again skipped the hero selection, now we're ready to go. That means Queen Akeshru, like I just mentioned, takes care of the left hand side. Now we're spreading the darkness before we're going in with Nimrul, because quite honestly, I don't even think you need Nimrul on this encounter, as long as you got Queen Akeshru, Umanu, and obviously Runner Clue, who happens to be the MVP in the darkness squad. So now you want to get rid of as many opponents as possible, so Akio's kill command is not going to result in a lot of skeletons hitting you. You can also just give them hammer time with Umanu, that also tends to work, and that's kind of it. That's kind of it. So you first want to move in with Runner Clue, then you still have an attack with Queen Akeshu, so this is pretty straightforward. You can do this if you happen to have these three units, and you can even batch Nimrul. We're continuing with uncommon encounter number one, where we can only play rogues that are not ranged. This is one of those newer victory conditions. And what I keep forgetting, shout out to Lord Nako, Sunshine is not a ranged unit. He does not have the range trait, even though he can attack with range, thanks to his active. So what you need to do here, obviously you need to go in with Nimrul, that part was pretty straightforward. And then you kindly Sunshine, and then think for two seconds where you need to attack first with Aitanamo. You start at the bottom, work your way to the top, and that gives 
gives you lightning victory without taking any damage and um, yeah that's pretty much it in uncommon encounter number two we need to deploy dark heroes so that means we're kind of restricted it's again kind of like caven realms however you can also bring grandma bones Personally, I don't think that that's the correct approach. It's not a terrible choice. She's a, she's a good unit. And there's some things you can do here with Grandma Bones. But after giving this some thought, I felt like Haven Realm still continues to be the way to go here. So there's one mistake that I made the first time I did this encounter, and that was moving too much to the bottom with Pina Keshru. You actually want to move Pina Keshru towards the left-hand side, because that means that the uh, Slinger in the upper left corner on the map can still get attacked by Queen Akeshru on the following turn. So that's something you need to keep in mind here. All right, so now we're moving with Umano to the bottom. Looking at this, I'm kind of like, hmm, I don't even think we would have needed to do this. And then we're moving to the right-hand side with Nimrul. And as always, Runner Clue, like I said, the MVP in this team, gives us a million shades. And now this is the reason why, okay, actually it's not, but if this unit had survived, we could have moved Queen Akeshru in and get the lightning victory. Didn't really happen here, but it happened before in my first run. Uncommon encounter number three requires us to play Cave Realm heroes. I'm up seeing a trend of sorts here. So again, uh, this time, this is, talk about a layup. Uh, I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything more obvious than this. Maybe with the Lionet encounters where you had to just like run in a straight line with Lionet. So that means we can blow past all of these barrels that are on the one hand side. And then obviously we want to use Umanu to deal some damage with, with her AOE. And on top of that, spread the darkness. Like it's pretty straightforward what's going on here. And then on top of all of that, we also want to use Nimrul. Now, I personally believe that the positioning is somewhat crucial not like super crucial but i always am a big fan of placing a wall of units between me and my opponent so that's why runner clue is moving to the top left because then there's shades in front of runner clue and the skeleton in the corner huh? cannot connect with him so that's why i played it this way so now the only question is can we finish this level before the lightning victory runs out but considering that we have two more turns this doesn't seem like that much of a challenge grandma bones is a very good unit but not very good at like a large opposition uh, if there's a lot of units attacking her there's next to nothing that she, she can do and that concludes all the common and uncommon encounters we continue with the rare encounters where we again need to play heroes that are not ranged and on top of that they also cannot be mounted. That's a very unique combination. And when you see this level, I mean, this just looks like a lot of fun. This is the level that is going to get the most playtime out of anyone playing this adventure. This is this is the level that is for us players, which is pretty obvious. I don't think that anybody really needs a guide for this level. I put a lot of thought into this for no apparent reason. So what, what I did is uh, play these units because Nimrod is really good at collecting gold and then we have Dogga who is kind of good at collecting gold because Dogga can create a couple of summons and then on top of that I thought well it's a summon so I might as well play Ruffy um, and that's basically the entire logic behind this whole move so we can use Nimrod to collect some gold on the left hand side we can use Dogga but before we do that we want to pick up a little bit more gold more gold Oli come on Tanamo yes correct and then after that we can bring in the um, well the summons and uh, then we take out the enemy. We had like three more turns. I, I think we didn't even have to attack here. So I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Nobody needs to like a run through a manual how to play th through this encounter. Rare encounter number two, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. I mean, I think there's no encounter that's less complicated than the one before. So this, I actually needed a couple of attempts and it's all about the positioning. You want to start with Nimrul because the darkness in the middle prevents the guy that can throw people, the palace guard, from connecting with Nimrul. Then you want to use Geeks on the right hand side and on the left hand side you need to get a little bit lucky because Tanamo needs to get a crit hit in to take the palace guard out. At least for the time being. Your chances of getting a crit hit in are going to get a lot better at the, at the end of this adventure. You're going to see my friend. On rare encounter number three, we again need to play Cave and Realm Heroes. Uh, I'm getting used to this. It's one of my favorite victory conditions because I happen to have most of them. So this I needed two attempts. The first attempt I got hit, uh, Runner Clue got hit. And then there was only one of these snipers or these horse archers and he was moving into the top left corner. So for that reason, I made the mistake of moving my Queen Akeshu too far to the bottom. So. Hint for you guys out there, you want to keep your Queen Akeshru in a place where she can eventually connect with the top left corner of the map again. Um, so now I'm playing this differently and honestly I don't even know what happened the first time because this time I'm not getting shot. I'm not even sure why this happens but with this positioning you're not getting shot. Now I'm a bit shocked, yeah, not shot, shocked, I know, it's a very similar word. 
And um, I, I didn't know what to do at first because I, I was so focused on my own initial game plan that I used the first time around I played this level. I <laughs> first had to like clear the confusion in my head. Then we're moving in with Kina Keshru at the top, with Nimrod at the bottom. Then we want to spread the darkness some more. That's Umano's job. And generally speaking, you want to move your units towards the top because at the bottom is Tavarinji and she has options, lots of them, to create a lot of uh, damage with her active effect. So you want to give her as many targets as possible because her active is actually trying to first hit summons and then hit your guys. So you need to give it, the active effect, enough to do to not hit your guys. So having said all that, now it's time to get a little bit out of range of Tavaringi because you cannot forget about her passive effect. When she hits someone, she's gonna hit the adjacent unit. So you need to make sure that your units are not getting hit by the passive, but that's really all you have to think of and then you get the perfect score. In rare encounter number four, we need to play Dark Hero. So that means in theory, we can bring Drainma Bones in, we can bring Katsume in. Uh, there's other units that you could bring in. Shun is a kind of tricky unit because Shun allows you to heal him when you use the active, because when he turns into spirit form, he's got full health again. So that's a cool and neat trick. So the trick here in this level, speaking of tricks, is to move Nimrod to the bottom and not next to Adasi, because the guy next to Adasi happens to be a horse archer. And if you hit a horse archer with a, uh, um, when you, when you're standing right next to him with a melee attack basically, even when it's a ranged unit, and I'm not saying that Nimrod is, but you, you get what I'm saying, then he's gonna shoot back. So you need to take that into consideration, that is very, very important. The other mistake you could be making here is forgetting to use um, Runner Clue before you take out all the enemies basically. But once you figure that out, I think you're in pretty good shade. Uh, shade? Yeah, shade is a good word but it's not really what we need here. So now I needed to get lucky because I messed this up a little bit. My first run I had like a million more shades, uh, second run I did not. So I'm creating another shade now I'm basically asking myself where's Akio. But what you can still do is place this opponent in darkness thanks to the passive effect the night banner of Umanu and then you have to pray. You have to hope that either your runner clue is standing in darkness so he can teleport there or you get really really lucky like I did and uh, the night vision is actually enough to uh, shoot him in the face and take him out even though it's a ranged unit. Good unit your Umanu, really good unit. That takes us to the last of the rare encounters where we only allow to deploy rogues, which is not much of a problem because it usually tends to mean we can play Giggs, one of the best units in the game. So here I liked playing with Naevis and also Pari. I think Pari actually helps quite a bit in this encounter. Uh, the couple of, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. First of all, you want to step on this uh, strudel, is what we call it in Germany, that tornado that goes into the bottom, right? I'm, I'm sure that's the exact English description that everybody would be using. Because otherwise, your opponents can teleport to you. So that immediately reduces a couple of fields for the danger zone and gives you some breathing room. Now we can move to the right. We don't want to like leave Pari where she is right now, because then she could get hit by one of these horse archers. Um, Geeks could normally not connect, but thanks to Naevis, he can. You have to get lucky, somewhat lucky, with the spawns, because you need a couple of rocks to tank a couple of attacks, as we can see here. So, that basically is uh, all you have to keep in mind for the first turn. And then the second, and the second turn is a bit more straightforward, in my personal opinion. So here we're using... Um, Pari is her name, with the active, to take out some of these guys. The Nimrul goes in, he takes uh, this guy almost out. And now again we have Naevis, which takes care of this guy. And then Naevis buffs Geeks to take care of the last guy. And then we still have frogs, and the frogs can tank a couple of attacks. And that's basically it. So Naevis is again helping us. This time Pari can connect from a position she could normally not connect from. And then Geeks wraps things up and we're done with the rare encounters. And so far we got perfect scores across the board. On the epic encounters, we need to play Cave and Realm Heroes. Woo! It's never getting old, if you're asking me. Uh, one of my favorite victory conditions. On this encounter, there are two approaches. The one approach is you go in with Nimrul, you spread the darkness with Umanu, and then you use Runner Clue. That is fair didn't quite work for me and we're going to see that here in this run. The second approach is you're using Nimrod on one side and you're using Queen Akeshru on the other side to create as many shades as possible after you go in with Runner Clue. Both of these strategies did not quite work for me. So uh, this is the first time I played this encounter where I tried the strategy with Nimrod on the one hand side and then go into the other side um, with first Umanu and then Runner Clue. And the problem here is that for whatever reason these skeletons love to hit my Umanu. It's not something I've ever seen because more often than not 
the, the units actually prefer to not hit um, my units. They prefer to hit, um, well, uh, my, my summons. Didn't really happen here, but in the end it's like almost a perfect score. I think I need to play this two or three more times to get like, the completely perfect score. I tried out three stars at least. Epic encounter number two, we need to play units that are not mounted and they need to bleed dark heroes. I felt like that's a bit of a weird restriction because it makes it pretty obvious that we do not want to play um, Voyasa in this level. I mean, it's something that I generally don't like to do any anyway, but uh, thanks for the reminder. So there's one tricky thing in this encounter and that is the fact that the dangerous zone is going to be somewhat misleading. The danger zone, um, and I'm using it here, it tells you that you're not within range or reach when you're moving into these spots here, but that is not the case because after these opponents have moved, Naevis can give one of these archers extra reach and I did not think of that whatsoever. And that's basically the one hit that I took. Um, and there's, there's ways to uh, avoid this. You can, for example, watch um, the stream of Aranus because he came up with... Uh, <laughs> I would call it wacky positioning that worked out in his favor because um, he did not get hit on the first turn. And you have, like, relatively speaking, quite a couple of turns. Uh, there's three more turns before we're basically done here. And uh, this is a misplay. Oh, no, actually, it's not a misplay. You first want to go in with Nimrod, then you want to move with Umano because Umano can spread darkness in case you didn't know. This is, uh, this is a note a favorite streamer of mine who happens to do Riven Guard streams. All right, then you also need to watch out that Naevis is not going to hit you with her active, but that's pretty much it. There's nothing left where you need to watch out here. You only need to look at the, uh, the turn counter, basically. We have two more turns here, so that means we have one more turn after this one to get the lightning victory. But keep in mind, Runner Clue can teleport, and that's the cheat here, because that means we can get the lightning victory on this turn already. So almost a perfect score, uh, just missing a little bit. Need to play this again, but again, three stars. Epic encounter number three is my favorite encounter of the entire adventure. It has nothing to do with the level design, I'm sorry Kyle, but you, you guys are going to see why in just a second. So first of all, I need uh, a little bit to figure out where I want my units to uh, stand, because I'm basically coming up with the game plan from the very beginning. And then we're kicking things off. First things first, there's a Katsuma in the back, that means you want to place her in darkness. You can do so by using the active of Queen Akeshu. Now Katsuma can only shoot you when you're running right next to her which is something we can avoid. We, we, we can actually not make mistakes in this game by using our brains. Then we created a lot of darkness with uh, Queen Akeshu and uh, Nimrod. Now we're using Umanu to spread that darkness. Now we should actually use the active of Runner Clue on Akio because then Akio is more inclined to use his active and not do anything. And watch what's going to happen next because Katsum is still alive. We see nine chumps of this arrow and none of my units get hit. This is my WTH RNG moment of the year. No matter what happens the rest of the year, I was celebrating this victory more than any other. Which takes us to the legendary encounter where we can only deploy rogues. Now this is a cool encounter just by like what it represents. It basically shows us this is year one of Riven Guard in a nutshell. There's a lot of bosses that we need to overcome with a couple of units that uh, we were unlocking during the one year tenure that we were playing this game. So I tried this uh, I think twice. This is my second run. Um, I like a lot of I like, like a lot of rogues. Um, you want to go with Parry to the left side because then Parry has color advantage against Penda, which means that Penda is immediately going down. So that's a good start. You also want to have Naevis next to Parry because that means that Sefa is taking a lot of damage. You can move all the way in the middle because Taro is in the way. So you kind of have to make a decision, what do I want to do on this side? And now in my head I was like, all right, Adasi is paper thin, so Tanamo can probably take care of him. Um, that means I only need to like try and come up with something for the left hand side. So now we can send in Nimrul. He can still not do like all that much, but he can get rid of Sefa, which is kind of useful if you if you're moving him all the way to the left hand side and then he can on top with his passive by the way and then he can also do a little bit of damage in the middle and now this needs to be the encore of Tanamo my favorite unit in the game and she's never letting me down that's the lightning victory three stars and absolutely no problems whatsoever. In total, I'm just missing a couple of uh, extra points in two of these encounters. Overall, I couldn't be happier with my progress in this adventure. You can see it here, 7,784. So there's just 16 points missing for me to get the perfect score 
in this adventure. And what an adventure it's been if you're asking me. I thought this was absolutely excellent. I loved the little surprise at the very end here where we could unlock a brand new weapon which has like super high crit rate and doing almost as much damage as um, the highest leveled legendary weapon for rogues. Personally, I'm a big fan of crit rate, extra crit rate, so I'm very likely going to play this weapon over legendary equipment. It's also a lot cheaper to upgrade this. Thanks again to the Snowprint team for one year of very happy memories. I love playing this game during the last year. Made a lot of new friends in my guild. Shout out to all of you guys. And I hope you guys that are watching these videos are having a good time with the game too. If you want to get better in the game, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also join the official Discord where the big party is happening. That's where all the good players are hanging out that's it for today already hope you guys enjoyed the show see you very very soon and have fun hunting mineral shards and laurels of course